Hi, this is Tim Pack with Terra Systems here with part two in our four part series of ISCO. Today, focused on delivery and distribution. So, just to reiterate, you know, we're not talking about distribution as shown up here statistically, we're talking about delivery of the mass of oxidant that we calculated previously within the subsurface. Why is this important? Well, for the chemical reaction to occur, there must be contact between the contaminant and the oxidant. If you get contact, there's a potential for that reaction to occur, and it is likely to occur if you've done the selection process correctly. However, if you do not provide the contact, there is no, con there is no potential for a reaction, and certainly you will have a failure. Some contact, limited reaction, maybe partial success, or maybe not, depending upon what happens in the subsurface. You know, to reiterate a few items, you know, all reactions occur in the aqueous phase. So the contaminant that you're trying to treat must be accessible in the aqueous phase for that reaction to actually occur. Delivery remains the largest single challenge at an ISCO site. We know the chemistry works, but facilitating that contact is the largest challenge of an ISCO site. What we're trying to do, simply shown, uh, is up on this graphic in the upper right hand side. You're trying to take contaminated groundwater, the clear beaker, and you're going to apply an oxidant to it. In this case, the purple liquid that you've dropped in there, uh, dropped in the subsurface, and you're trying to get that material to distribute evenly within the subsurface shown by the purple liquid at the far right. This process in a beaker is relatively easy, especially if you can stir it, distribute the material. In reality, in nature sites, that is considerably more difficult. So for the delivery approaches that exist, there is no silver bullet. Each method has its own advantages and disadvantages. And the evaluation of them is a complex site of interrelated factors, considering things such as the cost associated with the material you're putting in the ground, the subcontractor you're using to place it, the number of wells you need, etc., the cost of the amendment and its hazards and properties, the site limitations, access geology, receptors, etc., the contaminants present, the mass phase, dimension, treatability, etc., and the overall uncertainty the ability with which you've characterized the site and developed a conceptual model and evaluated the risk. I must say here that sites are difficult by nature. If this was easy, we would have already treated everything and we'd be done. And that's not the factors that we're dealing with in today's treatment world. Sites are increase, increasingly complex and pose increasing challenges. So if we look at what are the methods that are available for delivery, and here we've shown them is passive, active, and destructive, just for comparison purposes. By passive, I mean methods that don't change the subsurface. They work with the, the site conditions that are present there. Things such as a constant head injection, a flow-through barrier, a push-pull test. Place material on the ground, pull it back up out of the ground. You're not changing things. In active process, you're changing the conditions because you're imparting some kind of energy to the subsurface. Typically, you're pumping the material in under pressure, and that changes the natural conditions that are present in the subsurface in planned or unplanned ways, but things that need to be looked at. Destructive, of course, is the site is just too complex you need to destroy it, change it, either excavate it and get rid of it, kind of the ultimate in a destructive technique. Soil mixing, where you're mixing in material and you're basically destroying heterogeneity by adding the material in and mixing the entire soil column. Or media fracturing, where you're placing in solid material and allowing it to flow in fractures and distribute in the subsurface. So you're changing the subsurface condition by imparting fractures with this wide variety of methods. Let's take a look at a couple, just so you can see them. Picture's worth a thousand words, so here's a couple examples of passive injection sites. Uh, a tank draining into a series of wells in a pretty small area. An automated system using low pressure, no pressure injection, using constant head type techniques at a site, 
or a dissolvable type of material that you can deploy in the ground and go ahead and place the material and then allow it to insert itself over time and distribute in the subsurface. If we look at a more active process, again we talked about this is imparting energy to the subsurface, whether it be pressure in terms of an injection pressure, whether it be temperature in terms of thermal techniques or other energies such as EK. Electrokinetics where you're actually applying a current DC current to move things uh, in as ions in the subsurface. So you're changing the natural conditions of the subsurface in some way. Of these, the most typical is injection under pressure, usually by manifold style systems because you're applying it to multiple points at the same time. From a destructive point of view, we're looking at excavation techniques, as shown on the upper right, dig it up, haul it away. That's certainly the, the most destructive technique. Or soil mixing type techniques shown here with a backhoe mixing in oxygen into the subsurface treatment area, earth augers, or a fracturing type setup at a site. To reiterate here, delivery method selection is an engineering problem. It's based upon the knowledge you impart upon a site and your estimates of what you think is going to happen. As such, it remains an art. It is experiential technology, uh, crystal balling if you will, where you're taking a guess at how it is going to work in the subsurface. There are always surprises in delivery design and there are always differences in application at a site. You learn much during the actual implementation of a site that you can use to refine your conceptual model going forward. There is no right answer. Um, people often look at sites and say, you know, here we're going to do this because that's the best approach. Well, it's not necessarily the best approach. Maybe it's the most familiar or it's been done before. But the selection of that, you can apply things in a variety of different, different techniques. You need to be able to reconsider, adjust, change that method going forward. The observational approach or adaptive remediation. If what you're planning on doing isn't working, you need to be able to change that. How do you observe that? Well, during injection, you get feedback. You get information on pressures, flows, availability of material going in the ground, short circuiting, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And certainly after injection, you get performance data where you can evaluate the performance of the application process, virtual, virtually the expectations of them. So you look at a feedback loop where you can look at how did it do? How did it work? You know, did it work as expected or didn't it? Why not? Why not gives you information on your conceptual model. And it's very important to look at these during and after injection collection of data to be able to evaluate things going forward, refine your approach, maybe change it as needed going forward. As such, you know, Terra Systems, we're here to help. We're here to assist you as your project team in whatever way you like. We can help in design, formulation. We can look at technologies for you, provide applications. Again, we are not an implementor in the sense that we don't put anything in the ground, but we do have arrangements with other companies to provide recommendations for that. And we're also willing to assist in any way we can on custom designing, formulation, assistance, site and field support, etc. And here's our team shown up here. You're welcome to reach out to anyone, any one of us at any point in time. And again, thank you for listening. This was part two. Next time we'll resume with part three. Thank you much.